Dr. Paul Martin is here with me right now, the editor of Liver Transplantation, a key AASLD publication. Thank you so much for being here. Congratulations, I know your first issue published in July of this year. What is the new focus? We're going to broaden our uh, scope because we feel that the management of advanced uh, chronic liver disease is part of the skill set that's really important for uh, transplant uh, doctors. A lot of the effort in liver transplant relates to managing complications of decompensated cirrhosis. So we think it's a natural fit to expand our uh, scope into areas that are pertinent to um, ensuring the best outcomes for liver transplant, which in, to a large extent involve good pre-transplant care as well as more obvious techniques such as uh, the surgical outcomes and post-transplant immunosuppression. Can you talk about uh, one of the other issues that is kind of challenging for liver transplantation and that is finding donors and the allocation? So everything we do in liver uh, transplantation is limited by the number of uh, donors. Um, in the United States, there are continuing efforts to expand the uh, donor pool. One of the uh, frustrations is that a lot of potential donors are not appropriately identified. In, in response to the continuing shortage, there have been a variety of uh, surgical advances, in, including live donor transplant, uh, splitting uh, livers, etc., and <clears throat> using uh, donor organs that would probably probably have been uh, discarded uh, a decade or two ago, but it, it, it is more than anything else the major challenge in liver transplant. You touched on the, the surgical techniques and how they are changing. Is that something that you'll be focusing on as well to get that word out to potentially save more patients? Absolutely, and a key part uh, of our content is uh, related to describing innovative uh, surgical techniques. And one of the other things is the long-term outcomes because the surgery has to be a success, but then after that it takes so much more to keep the patient thriving. No, absolutely. And um, particularly as we move into an era where hepatitis C will be less of a long-term threat, increasingly patient outcomes are, are related to good general medical care, attention to comorbidities such as obesity, uh, renal insufficiency. And so again, we're very interested in soliciting papers that address these issues. And not just in the United States, but really an international focus so that you may gain some expertise from people all over the world. Absolutely, uh, because transplant, uh, liver transplant uh, faces challenges in every part of the world. And some of those challenges are unique to the local environment, so one of our columns is called uh, Transplantation International and what we're doing is soliciting uh, reviews from colleagues across the world who can describe uh, the challenges they face that may be unique to their particular circumstances and countries. So for people who are now picking up liver transplantation and reading it, do you think that they are going to notice the new focus and what do you hope they get out of it? Well, we want it to be the go-to journal for uh, our colleagues who want to submit papers related to liver transplantation, but also all of us who work in uh, transplantation where we, where we can continue to publish the cutting edge papers that are informative and ultimately improve patient care. In addition, we're con continuing to uh, encourage submissions related to the science of uh, liver transplant because ultimately a lot of what happens in the lab may have uh, yield better long-term outcomes for individual patients. And bringing those two together is going to help not only the doctors who treat the patients, but the patients themselves. Dr. Martin, thank Excellent. you so much. Thank you.